Professor Kunis Yaron Ikigid. Very warm welcome to you all to our special service this morning of, of uh, Holy Eucharist. Please take a seat. Please be seated. So welcome to this service for the seventh Sunday after Trinity. And for the first time, a warm welcome to those who are joining us live online as we live stream this service of Holy Eucharist for the first time ever. This is very much uh, a trial for us, so please bear with us if there are blips in the technology. Today we're thinking about uh, our growth in Jesus and also the kingdom's growth in us and in the world. And so I pray that today, as we meet together in this new hybrid way, we will grow in confidence and in hope. Please be guided by our stewards and vergers at all times during communion, and please wait to be invited up to receive communion uh, by the stewards. On your right, as you approach me, there will be some hand sanitizer. Please apply some to your hands before you receive communion. And at the end of the service, to avoid the stampede for the door, please wait in your seats to leave by the stewards. And so we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you. We pray together. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith. Heavenly Father, we have sinned, thought, word, and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, and set you free from sin, strengthen you in goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand and say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings.
seven years be your younger daughter Rachel. Laban said to her, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the luck he had. Thank you. 
make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell him all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the words that he commanded for a thousand generations. The covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, to you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for inheritance. Here ends the psalm. Glory to you, O Lord. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the goods into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping. Have you understood all of this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, out of his treasure what is new and what is old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he left that. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> A few weeks ago, I was asked by our local church school to write something for their end-of-term newsletter, something short to reflect on these last four months. And whilst it's been very odd, time has both flown and stood still. Um, the hardest part for us here living on the peninsula, on this glorious and sacred peninsula, uh, has been to share this place with the world again, um, after having it all to ourselves for months. I wonder if there will ever be a time again when I will be the only person on White Sands Beach in what should have been the post-Easter holiday season. But writing this reflection made me realize and perhaps appreciate just how quickly things had changed in a very short space of time. But how we'd also changed as people. I dare say we've even grown in our appreciation for the things that we've missed. Perhaps we've learned a new skill. 
Certainly, both the great institutions of the church and education have learned and grown to become something that they were definitely not and probably would never have become in a very short time in order to fill the void that the pandemic created. Lessons taught remotely, children learning from home, churches streaming and recording services for those who could not come to church. And whilst it's not normal, it's sort of normal now, these skills are skills that will serve us well for the future, whatever that may bring. Many people obviously became bakers early on in the pandemic with all these amateur Paul Hollywoods buying every shop out a strong white flour and yeast. 16 kilogram sacks of strong white flour were the only things available direct from the mills because the supermarkets are sold out. Perhaps, though, that was a good skill to relearn. Certainly, the kitchen, which had become a passing post at best for families, eating at different times, seemed to become the very nerve center of the home again, with daily routine marked out by mealtime and meals needing to be cooked from scratch, and of course, the daily bread baked. In our gospel reading from Matthew, both the mustard seed and the yeast that's talked about in the parables, they symbolize growth. And the parables, both seemingly insignificant and small topics, are yet something that will grow into something far more substantial. Jesus, of course, isn't talking about our skills developed through lockdown, but he's talking about the kingdom of heaven or the rule of God in our life. And he uses a number of parables, some of which repeat the point which he was making. The mustard seed, of course, isn't the smallest seed known today, but it was the smallest seed used by Palestinian farmers and gardeners. And under favorable conditions, the plant could reach some 10 feet in height. And just as yeast appears lifeless and dead until it's mixed with the dough, then it affects everything. Similarly, the kingdom of heaven can spread through a person's life. I wonder if this hasn't been a new age of the Spirit with the learning and the use of technology where the Holy Spirit has actually grown communities of people who perhaps would never have gone to their local church to explore their faith, but have been able to sit at the back, as it were, anonymously watching and growing in their faith and in their understanding. When you think about the apostles and how afraid and discouraged and disillusioned they were after Jesus' death, it does make you realize that's pretty much how we all felt here, cut off without a hope. And yet slowly we've been transformed into a far bolder and resilient community with some hope for the future, and not least some hope in what this technology will achieve for us in the future. If it is a work of the Spirit, and I believe that it is, then glory be. And who knows how this story will end. We know that the apostles' initially fairly timid work in Jerusalem began there, in their hometown, as it were. But that, it quickly spread to other centers. 30 years later, new faith had reached most parts of the eastern section of the Roman Empire, and probably even beyond, as well as westwards to Rome itself. And during the persecution after Jesus' ascension that led to Stephen's death, many Christians were forced to flee. But as they, as they fled, they took with them news about Jesus wherever they went throughout the province of Judea, into Samaria, to the north. Philip led the way by evangelizing extensively among the despised Samaritans. And this resulted in mass conversions. Other Christians traveled to the coast, to the island of Cyprus and to Antioch in Syria, the third city of the empire, preaching the message of Jesus with great success. And it was in the large city of Antioch that the revolutionary step of evangelizing non-Jews was first taken by some of these nameless refugees from Jerusalem. So during these early years, Peter evangelized among his fellow Jews, but only within his own country. Between AD 47 and 57, Paul established flourishing churches in major cities in the Roman provinces of Galatia, Asia, Macedonia, and Achaia. By the end of the first century, there were strong congregations in Alexandria, Ephesus, Antioch, Corinth, Thessalonica, and even at Rome, the capital of the empire. 
By 250 AD, a significant Christian minority existed in almost every province of the empire and also in several countries to the east. After another 50 years, Christians formed a majority in parts of the provinces of Africa and Asia Minor. Finally, the emperor himself began supporting Christianity in AD 312. According to a 2011 Pew Research Center survey, there were 2.3 billion Christians around the world in 2010, more than three times as many as the 600 million recorded in 1910. According to the 2015 Pew Research Center study, by 2050, the Christian population is expected to be 2.9 billion. And it's been estimated that there are 6 million new Christians in Africa each year. That's one in five Christians are now African. A scholar recently wrote, perhaps one of the two or three most important events in the whole of Christian history has occurred. A complete change in the center of gravity of Christianity so that the heartlands of the church are no longer in Europe and North America, but in Latin America, in certain parts of Asia and in Africa. How could these poor, disillusioned disciples have known what was about to happen to their words as the good news of the, uh, spread like wildfire throughout the world and down the ages. Perhaps like them, we need to trust more and worry less, to allow God's plan to carry us and to use our current situation to allow us to grow beyond our wildest dreams in hope and in faith. Amen. We're going to stand and affirm our faith by saying together the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Thank you. 
Stand for the peace. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body on the cross. We meet in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. 
we offer one another a socially distanced nod or a wave. We celebrate together the gifts and grace of God. We take this bread, we take this wine, to follow Christ's example and obey his command. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks, Holy Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has restored to us eternal life. And so with the host of angels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim the glory of your name and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. All praise and thanks to you, true and living God, creator of all things, giver of life. You formed us in your own image, but we have marred that image and fall short of your glory. We give you thanks that you sent your son to share our life. You gave him up to death that the world might be saved, and you raised him from the dead that we might live in him and he in us. Sanctify with your spirit this bread and wine, your gift to us, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. As he has commanded us, Father, we remember Jesus Christ, your Son, proclaiming his victorious death, rejoicing in his resurrection, and waiting for him to come in glory. We bring to you this bread and this cup. Accept our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Restore and revive your people. Renew us and all for whom we pray with your grace and heavenly blessing. 
and at the last receive us with all your saints into that unending joy promised by your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. We all share in that bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. body of Christ given for us. The blood of Christ shed for us.
Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in this saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. We pray together. We thank you, Father, for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son in this holy sacrament, through which we are assured of the hope of eternal life. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Keep us in the fellowship of his body, the Church, and send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may be filled with hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you today and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>